Better call 911, because South Park's about to roast the Hollywood Hive, and everyone's on the menu. Whether it's Disney's Rachel Ziegler, who actually hates Snow White, Netflix Cleopatra, Meghan Markle and her finger puppet Harry, all the way to Marvel, who just hates the fans. No one's safe. The guys return, and they fire up the grill to serve up the Pandaverse. This is going to be a feast of an episode to remind every actor, diversity director, and quota queen that canceled great storytelling all for the agenda that truth and fun, they're not extinct. They've just been ignored. By the time South Park's done realigning Hollywood's reality, one plus one will equal two again. What's going on, everybody? Tinseltown's Echo Chamberly, better speed dial their life coaches, or get on the phone with 24-hour psychic hotline. And fast, because South Park's going to dismantle their delusions. Come October 27th, Paramount Plus is holding a special event. The guys are back, and this time they're girls, and they're joining the Pandaverse. It's a brand new exclusive event with all your favorite South Park characters. There's Cartman, Stan, Butters, Kenny. South Park's creators, Matt and Trey, are jesters with javelins. Two fools telling the king the truth he needs to hear. In a world where the court lives and lies. You have to love them because everyone is on the table. No one is safe. How dare you, sir? See, it doesn't matter who you are or what you say or what you believe in. If you assault common sense with crazy or want to be with a God complex demanding to be worshipped, bingo, congratulations, you're going to become a punchline. Just ask the Megans. Can we rally him up here and finally have our own privacy? My love, I will do anything for your privacy. This show is going to be fire. Every one of Hollywood's most revered bureaucratic checkbox champions are in the crosshairs. See, the gang, they've been gender swapped and sprinkled with a little diversity dust. You got Stan. He's now a salsa stepping fiery Latina. You got Kyle. He's now dishing out the drama as an Indian woman. And then you got Cartman, who's cranking up the volume as a black diva. And then you have Kenny. He's going to be parading his new purple hairdo as an Asian girl. And last but not least, I even think I saw Butters, who's been transitioned into a mascot for the Rainbow Pride. Think of this South Park special as a satirical slap to Tinseltown and every major studio that replaced the magic of great storytelling with a giant soapbox for a manic modern-day makeover. But you know what? Not everyone is happy that this episode is coming out. The Spider-Man referencing title suggests that the show will be offering its take on increasing calls for diversity in mainstream media, or at least allegations that said calls are cynically exploited by studios to make money. And hey... Do you get these pounding headaches in the front of your skull while watching this stuff? We get these pounding headaches in the front of our skull. Of course they do. They hate the fact that the Hollywood Hive's message machine has been exposed. Who hates the title of a series episode? It's called Joining the Pandaverse. I think it's spot on the money. See, long gone are the days of the silver screen magic. We had studios like Warner Brothers who gave the customers exactly what they wanted. A good time, a brief break from life where you could relax for a couple of hours. That doesn't happen anymore. Today, Hollywood panders to the latest virtue signaling flavor of the month, all so they could score a few more woke points with the latest online mob of self-appointed hashtag heroes and window lickers. As for woke, we already know what that means. It's camouflage, an excuse for talentless hacks to write even more garbage material than blame their failures on the fans. Typical. How many times have we seen reboots of classic films we grew up with of children having their guts ripped out of them, the heart pulled right out of its core? Or even worse today, you got news shows which change historical facts for someone's feelings. Take Netflix, for example. They cast black actress Adele James to play Cleopatra. Normally, it wouldn't matter if they were shooting a feature film or a fictional series. Great, go for it. The more, the merrier. Hell, Hollywood cast Elizabeth Taylor in that part for the Queen of the Nile in 1963. But you never once heard 20th Century Fox promote their movie as a bona fide documentary like Netflix did. Still, the streaming giant isn't alone. Disney often abuses its audience by corrupting the canon. Just take their latest Peter Pan. They not only gender swap the Lost Boys with more girls, which, by the way, the boys, and their gender and background are an essential element to the plot. But you're not all boys. So? But I guess it doesn't really matter. Yes, it does matter. It matters very much to me.
But then they ray swap Tinkerbell, Peter Pan, the same way they're doing in their new live action Snow White with Rachel Ziegler. Let's address the elephant in the room. I'm the hottest person in the world. Casting an actor or an actress, if they're the best talent for the part, that's great. That's how everyone should do it. Unless the character they're going to be portraying has a defining physical characteristic that is integral to the role, i.e. Snow White with skin as white as snow. Because doing the opposite is just poisoning the story. I mean, imagine, could you cast Brad Pitt or Robert Downey Jr. as Black Panther? You couldn't. Because the king of Wakanda, the mythical African nation, it's all about his history, his culture, and his ethnicity. If you change that, you rob it of all its rich majesty. But that's exactly what Disney did. They cast Rachel Ziegler. Not only a smug, self-entitled wannabe Karen, but it's someone who actually hates Snow White, the fairy tale, true love, and heroic prince who are coming to the rescue. But that's just par for the course. The Mouse House changed the entire foundation of the story just to fit an agenda. You said you were bringing a modern edge to it on stage. What do you mean by that? I just mean that it's no longer 1937. But what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> and we absolutely wrote a Snow White that she's is... not going to be yeah. saved by the prince. She's not going to be saved by the prince, and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. Well, that sucks. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be. So we really shouldn't be surprised that Marvel did the very same thing. Phases one through three were a thing of beauty, brilliance, and action. And then somehow Kevin Feige got in touch with his inner broken beta male bobblehead, and he betrayed all of Stan Lee's virtues and love for his characters. And ever since, the audience has been fed a steady diet of liquid lectures, and if they were all written by the women of The View. And guess what? A big surprise is coming next month. The MCU is about to premiere their biggest disaster in history. Brie Larson returns in the Marvels as another role model for the Hollywood message machine. What's the message? Women are perfect, the story doesn't count, and men suck. Today, studios, they don't care about entertaining you anymore. They want to recruit you into the culture war. And all you have to do to get membership into their exclusive club is one, hate yourself. And two, cheer for their permanent victims on the big screen, which are pointing a finger at you as the problem in today's society. You're a monster. I'm not the monster here. You are. You and the rest of that fairy tale trash poisoning my perfect world. Well, thankfully, Matt Trey and the boys, they're a demolition crew. They're going to give a master class on savage sarcasm and honesty, and they're going to slap Hollywood sober, and they're going to unmask their ideology and comedy goal. We always try to find a way, if it's funny, you know, to make it work. You know, if you do it right, you can, you can make it work if it's smart. I mean, but we we're do, never, we yeah, we're, we're just never sitting there going, you know, it's talking right. about yeah. the offensive part. Yeah, right. Yeah. We just, the show it airs and it's like, oh, you know, this was really offensive. We're like, oh, it was? Oh. <laughs> yeah. well, good news is, is that there's a very strong rumor that the new season of South Park in 2024 is going to unleash the sequel to the Megan's Worldwide Privacy Tour. And I guarantee you, Harry is going to love it. What? Now, if you found value in the video and you enjoy it, hit the subscribe button, share with everyone you know, and leave your thoughts in the comments down below. And to win every battle and stay true to yourself, all you have to remember is we never bow down, we never bend the knee. Always forward. Don't worry, my love. He's not going to get away with this.